everybody out there on Facebook. My name is David Albertson. I'm going to have the pleasure to interview Rachel Eldridge, a violin, viola, piano teacher for us here at CB Music Studios. Rachel, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. How are you doing? I'm doing awesome. You, both of you and I are at our studios here yep. teaching <laughs> online lessons. I caught you right between lessons. And so we're going to have a little bit of a quick interview for you guys out there. If you're watching, feel free to ask questions. Type them in the chat box. I'll be able to see them. But let me get started, Rachel. Tell us a little bit about just your background, how you got started with the instrument, and which instrument you started with first. You teach three. Tell us about that. <laughs> um, yeah, so I, when I was really little, I saw a guy on TV, on PBS. I think it was Andre Rear actually playing, and um, little six-year-old brain goes, I want one of those. And um, one of our family friends, my, we would call him aunt and uncle, but they, they um, surprised me with a violin. And um, then my parents go, all right, time for lessons. That <laughs> is like, awesome. Yeah, I, but I just wanted one. I didn't want so, but I kept up with lessons all through high school. Um, and then I went to William Jessup University okay. over in Roseville. Yeah, I'm um, from Roseville. From What's up? Rockland yes. Where, yeah. <laughs> I went there for a music degree. And um, to do that, you have to learn how to play the piano. Mm -hmm. um, so that's how I started to play piano. And then viola, um, I just happened to pick up a student who needed that. And it's pretty similar. I just had to make sure I was reading my clefs right and um, help them out with that. And kind of was more like a mentor on the side to help them out with that. So that was um, an exciting new experience. But my mom plays, vi uh, plays piano. So I've had music in the house growing up and... Um, that's that's pretty much it. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, and I, we know that's that's a pretty quick synopsis, but it's very cool that your yeah. parents are supportive of you studying an instrument and that you had that interest. I find that uh, yeah. that kids are interested in music, and if it's not fostered, it becomes something they regret later on in life. Um, I met a hundred yeah, people. A, Go ahead. Go ahead, Rachel. I have a lot of friends that I did. I did Suzuki Method growing up, and I have a lot of friends from that program because we do group lessons and um they all go wow I'm surprised you still play or that you still do anything with it because I really I dropped it when I went to college or when I went to move or whatever and I I don't play anymore so like and I really miss it so um yeah I'm really um blessed to be able to keep doing what I do <laughs> totally and I would say too I my experience with violins actually it comes way later in life I was a guitarist listening to rock and roll. I play bass, yeah. learned to play drums. And it came in college when I went to Sac State and studied string bass. Um, they have a Suzuki mm -hmm. orchestra program. And uh, the teachers there needed us to all be able to at least teach beginning violin. So I, mm -hmm. I scratched my way through Twinkle Twinkle Little Star like everyone does. And yep. uh, about 10 years later now, I feel comfortable enough to play in public. So everyone could start at any yeah. age, I feel like. So exactly. if you're out, exactly. Yep, so if you're out there and you're watching and you're curious, oh, I'm too old. Don't, don't think that everyone has the ability to learn something new and grow. Uh, mm -hmm. Moving on though, I would like to know, how long have you been here with CB? I started when I was going to school at William Jessup teaching and I was a sophomore, I think it was uh, 2012. So I've been here for a good chunk of time coming Eight up on 10 years. years. Yeah. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> it's awesome. exciting. Um, it's been fun to um, see how the studio has changed and grown over the last almost decade. It's changed a lot from when I from what I remember in the first location, two thousand six. The studio the studio has grown from just a few rooms to now we have nine rooms. Um, yeah. And you remember the middle location they had off Douglas, yeah. um, yes, which I also taught at. So yeah, you were probably excited for Kelly's cookies every once in a while, and I'm sure your students Definitely. were too. <laughs> Good times. I was like, I need to get a little in between. Yeah. <laughs> So uh, with violin and viola, it's interesting you mentioned Suzuki method. Do you teach Suzuki method or do you choose some of the other methods that are out there? Um, I mainly go from the Suzuki books and um, for my younger students, especially the whole concept of um, the learning by ear, I feel is really important and just by feel because um, it's how we learn um, languages as well. We don't start reading right away, right? And so mm -hmm. that's a big 
um, focus for the younger students and for my older students and my adult students as well. It's like, see, this is how it feels. Keep that nice ringing sound when you're playing with your third finger because it's catching all the sounds from your other instruments. Mm -hmm. I do like to pull theory in for sure because I think that's really important um, a skill just to help develop brain development and just um, with just learning to look ahead, that whole thing of looking at your music. You don't have to stare right at that one note you're playing. Look a note or two or a couple measures ahead, and that really helps um, that focus. Totally. And, and I think that you are among, I know me and a few other teachers, there are lots of string teachers here. We're very fortunate at CB. Um, we do blend the methods. A lot of us do. We all came up, I think, a little bit with some of that Suzuki method. Even with me as an adult, I played you know, yeah. long, long ago, like everyone else does. Yeah. And um, the songs, being thinking of the song instead of always just uh, being so buried in exercise, I think is important for kids um, to remember that yeah. music can be fun and it should be mm -hmm. part of your exercise when you practice. Um, so that's yeah. great here. What, how about piano? Are you doing piano adventures or Alfred method? Yeah, I'm using the Alfred books. Um, and then um, what's really nice with the online lessons is that I can, if we have a couple minutes at the end of the lesson to pull up musictheory.net and do some quick little quizzes. It's kind of like flashcards, but I'd be able to share the screen with the kids on that. So that helps with, um, with, with memorizing those placements of the notes and lengths of notes, things like that. Yep. And, and actually, I'm glad you brought it up. Uh, as you could all tell out there, if you're watching and feel free to ask questions if you are, uh, we're meeting through Google Hangouts right now, but I know, Rachel, you're you're using everything. You're using Skype, Zoom, <laughs> Duo, all anything that allows the students to access lessons, which is, is great. And would you mind telling us a little bit more about maybe how you, how, you know, your space? It looks like you have a nice space, too. Yeah, I'll do a little, I'll pick up my computer and move around. Um, I have a little bit of space i've got i just set this up this year so this is really exciting i've got my my music over there i've got my piano right here um i've got just whiteboard and all that stuff the biggest um help that i've noticed with um with having to transfer to online lessons is that being able to meet on any platform um like a lot of my students, I even do like over FaceTime or even over um, Facebook Messenger. That's been really helpful for some of my students. That's really like the only way we can meet. Um, and one nice thing about having my studio is I can have my dog with me. Yeah. She's, she's not on her bed. I don't understand why she does that, but <laughs> what it is. So, but um, yeah, having the ability to um, just kind of use any platform has been really awesome to continue teaching my students. That's great. And I'm going to throw out there, for those of you that may be watching that have seen some of the other interviews, I always try and throw a tidbit out there just to share some new things about what we're doing at the studio. Uh, I myself have a home studio, and this is something that I could bring into CB Music Studios, but I use an audio interface to record all the sounds that we're playing through. So for example, if I want to play piano, my piano is already plugged in, set up, ready to go. If I'm ready to play violin for my next student after, I have my five-string Yamaha sounds a little bit like this. Yes. It has five strings, so I could teach those viola students as well. And uh, all the teachers out there, if you guys are curious, we are all teaching online, and we've all found our best ways to meet with students. And we could help you guys also get set up like us so that you can get the most out of lessons. Um, you know, Rachel, speaking of, uh, we had a recital, which is something that we believe yeah. in strongly. I think you had a few students in there. Tell us about what kind of pieces they played and what they worked on over the summer. Yeah, so um, we, a couple of my students just picked some of the Suzuki pieces. Um, they felt that that was the um, best way for them to keep progressing. Um, and so the, and then another couple of my students picked um, some Broadway pieces. So that was really fun because then it actually opened them up to different genres. Um, I can't, it was only a few weeks ago and now I'm like way ahead of where we were playing on them. On we're already focused on the next step. Yeah. I know, I know, exactly. So, um, but they, it, it really opened up a whole new genre for them and that was really exciting. Um, and we just really made sure, especially over, um, the online lessons that we were focusing on good posture and 
producing a good sound, even though it was just to mom holding the camera and then eventually having everyone see over a YouTube preview, uh, yeah, YouTube reveal or whatever it's called. So, yeah. Um, it was, it was a new experience, but the kids seemed to have a lot of fun with it. Yeah, I think that for my students, um, and a lot of teachers participate in this, we really promote this here at CB. Um, the recording aspect of this, you know, we had to do it, of course, for the current conditions in the world, but it does yeah. help the students get a new perspective on what it's like to make a video because a lot of these students are very much focused on digital media. They love social media and things like that. And if they can connect with something that they like and make music as part of that connection, uh, they're going to grow. And I noticed that a lot of students practice a lot harder because they could see their progress themselves and felt like they were in control of their learning. And we were there to help facilitate mm -hmm. and guide them through that. So it's very cool that you had, you know, you helped your students get through it and helped them connect with that. Um, we, I know we only have a few more minutes left, but I definitely want to try and get squeeze as much information out of you because you're a great teacher. We want to know what are some of your tips for the beginners that you have or people who are just getting started. They're not really sure where to start with violin or piano. Um, I think the biggest thing, um, well, there's a couple of things. Number one, it is going to take a lot of work, um, especially with the violin. It's one of those instruments where it's like I'm you're learning violin and brothers learning piano and they're already five songs ahead right but it's it's the beginning is about um a nice solid foundation we want to make sure that your posture is good we want to make sure that your um your sound that is coming out is very clear and really strong um and the um the the other thing i would say is that practice is about quality, not quantity. I get that question a lot from my newer students and especially from their parents. Yes, I want parent involvement as well. That's another aspect that I wanted to mention. Um, parents being involved, especially at the beginning, just to help motivate and encourage your student to keep up that practice. Um, but it's about quality, not quantity. And what I mean by that is you may practice for 30 minutes but it may just be flying through everything and okay, I did my time in the end, but we got to make sure if, if we're practicing to really say, oh, wow, I didn't notice that when I st play, I start to scrunch up or when, um, when I'm playing through my music, all of a sudden my bow hand looks like this, right? And we want nice, relaxed, mm -hmm. nice round, relaxed bow and elbow and wrist. Um, and so taking, t and that may take more brain power and, <clears throat> excuse me, in five minutes than it does 30 minutes of just brushing through something. So um, really taking that time to um, let yourself grow in those aspects. That's a great piece of information. <laughs> I have a very similar idea about how to practice. And I teach my students uh, and I like to model our lessons actually pretty much at, like how a good practice session should be. Um, yeah. So I definitely yes, agree exactly. that that when we just think about moving through the motions or just always trying to go from beginning to end of a piece, you might not actually accomplish as much as if you just focused on a small piece of the structure or if you focus on one specific mm -hmm. technique that you 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 particularly want to be better at. So um, I totally agree. Mm -hmm. And Rachel, I know you got a, you got a student coming up here. you back the lessons here at 3 o'clock. Um, I want to thank you again for your time, making time for us yeah, here for yeah. this interview, for being a great teacher at CB Music Studios. For those of you that are watching, if you'd like to get signed up or know someone that would, uh, our teachers are offering free trial lessons, and they can start online today. They can start at 3.30 right after your other appointment. So uh, <laughs> feel free to send us an email at lessons at cbmusicstudios.com or message us here on our Facebook. And feel free to share this interview with anyone you know interested in getting started with lessons this fall. All right, Rachel, thank you very much. Have a great weekend. Awesome. Thank you.